Hi everyone, I'm Don Grimm, actuary and owner of Archer Actuarial Consulting. In part one of this video series on loss development, during the next five minutes or so, I'll show you how to calculate loss development factors. Let's get started. In order to analyze loss development, we need to start with a loss triangle. In this example, we have a paid loss triangle on an accident year basis with annual evaluations from age 12 months to age 60 months for accident years from 2016 through 2020. If you're not familiar with a loss triangle, I recommend you start with a loss triangle introduction video. In that video, we build this exact paid loss triangle from scratch. Note that we could use a different type of loss triangle as an example. The development concepts are analogous in either case. We're going to populate the paid loss development triangle that corresponds to the paid loss triangle above it. The development triangle is also on an accident year basis, starting with accident year 2016. The reason that accident year 2020 is absent will become obvious shortly. Notice that the maturities look a bit different too. The first maturity is read 12 to 24, and then this example represents the change in paid loss between age 12 months and age 24 months. Let's calculate our first loss development factor. I'm going to use the common abbreviation LDF going forward. For accident year 2016, the 12 to 24 LDF equals the ratio of paid losses at age 24 months to those at age 12 months. In other words, 7,759 divided by 4,989. This equals 1.55. Let's enter this LDF in the corresponding cell in our development triangle. Okay, a quick recap. For accident year 2016, the 12 to 24 LDF equals 1.55. This means that the loss at age 24 is 1.55 times the amount at age 12, or a 55% increase. The change in loss over time as age increases is referred to as loss development. Let's quickly go over the calculations for two more LDFs. The 24 to 36 LDF for accident year 2016 is the ratio of the loss at age 36 to the loss at age 24. This equals 9,420 divided by 7,759, or a factor of 1.21. The 12 to 24 LDF for accident year 2019 is the ratio of the loss at age 24 to the loss at age 12. After a bit of arithmetic, we calculate a factor of 1.36. We're going to perform the remaining LDF calculations behind the scenes and populate the rest of the triangle. Notice that the development triangle is smaller than the loss triangle. This is because two data points are required to calculate each LDF, so the development triangle will always have one less diagonal than the loss triangle. Next, we're going to calculate some averages, and I'll introduce you to the concept of a loss development pattern. Using simple arithmetic, we calculate the following averages. For example, 1.56 is the straight average of the highlighted LDFs and represents the average development in the historical data between age 12 months and age 24 months. What about the average LDF beyond age 60? The LDF that anticipates development beyond the age range of the underlying loss triangle is called the tail factor. Tail factors are a very important part of loss development and will be discussed later in this video series. The set of LDFs across all ages is generically referred to as a loss development pattern. Note that there are other ways of representing loss development that are also called loss development patterns, so it's important to be aware of the context in which this is used. And that's all for now. In the next video, I'll show you how to use LDFs and loss development patterns to estimate ultimate losses, which can in turn be used to estimate loss reserves. Any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below. Thanks for watching.